The galleries are your experts. They are here to provide information, uh, to explain the artist for you. Always when you walk into a gallery and you don't have those sheets you see on the desk, that's for you to take and read. And it gives you a lot of insight into that artist, what they're about, what their work is. They typically will have that list there of the pieces as well. For those who are buying or, or clients who have worked with them a long time, they will give you a list with the prices as well. Oftentimes, especially with this gallery, by the time the shows are open, many of the works are sold. So what happens is you build a relationship with the gallery, and then you become one of the people that they give those previews to, and then you get first pick on items. So that's why I have a really great relationship with Jack Shaman, primarily because I, fo I focus on artists of the African diaspora, and they have some of the best artists of that category in the country. So, um, and I just, known them for so long that we just developed a really great relationship. But I was really happy that they were able to open a second gallery because it was impossible to really show all the great artists they had within a, a, a year to 16 month cycle. You know, so this way now they have double spaces and they can show more of the artists at the same time. He could have been working on this a year before and that happened because this is just him speaking from his insides. And as you and I, as, as most of us know, because we're black, these issues are not just now, but because of the Black Lives Matters, uh, people want to contextualize him just at this time. But he's talking about from the civil rights movement, which is when he started working, to now. I think about the fact that he went to Yale, and at the time he went to Yale, I'm sure he had to be one of the only black students there, and their focus was going to be always on European culture. So that's what he is deep in, is his, in his education. And photographing from kind of the era of um, Western African photography really took off after you know, the independence, um, where James Brown was a heavy influence, style, music, um, club scenes, and so he's really known for that as well. This front wall um, is kind of a, a departure. It was studio style, but he's not as well known for it. was kind of departure from doing straight on studio portraits that you'll see in some of the other works. Um, but then doing the backs of them, which kind of became this like foray into working in fine art for him and moving away from just the, the standard studio practice. Um, one of a similar piece like this is in the collection of Studio Museum in Harlem. Um, and it's just kind of nice to be showing a lot of works of his that people haven't seen before. So a good gallery will do things like that. They will support the artists around their vision and even help them go even to higher levels and, and maybe even with better construction uh, techniques and things like that. You know, So a, a gallery is more than just a place for the artists to plot their work and sell it. Good galleries like this gallery, uh, they support the artists in a lot of different ways and the collectors as well. They're, doing, they're thinking of it as an investment. Now how people approach that, whether they really are buying so that what they're buying is an investment is another conversation. But that's typically what most people have in the back of their mind when they're buying artwork. Some people buy it just because of the joy of it, uh, or they, they run across a piece of artwork and they feel really related to it. It tells some story from their life. Uh, Jonathan was just saying about this uh, Nick Cave piece that his grandmother uh, embroidered uh, doilies, and that piece really spoke to him because of that, because he collects them. Uh, so that could be a situation like that. Uh, some people want to support a specific artist or a group of artists. Uh, for a long time, for instance, African-American artists who did uh, non-figurative work didn't have as much, uh, get as much attention as a market. I, I think that at, at one stage in my life, I thought the only famous black artists were Robert Bearden and Jacob Lawrence uh, because they got all of the attention. At the same time, there were people like Sam Gillian, who was just an amazing artist. Uh, and who broke out in so many different ways and has influenced so many artists of all colors uh, now. But 
that is another reason. So we have a friend, for instance, right now that has a piece in the Norman Lewis show. He supported all of these black artists who worked with uh, abstract as their work, and now they are viewed in his works that he played probably four or five figures for are now six, seven, and eight figure pieces. So, uh, but he didn't do it for the uh, money. He did it because he loved the work and he wanted to support those artists. Uh, some people want to uh, support a specific institution. Uh, there are uh, different uh, uh, larger scale institutions that will be selling art or that have art auctions. Um, some people do it just for social prestige and it definitely does that. You see that especially in new economies. Uh, people in China where the economy took off, uh, all of a sudden they are the biggest market. And you know that because the art fairs have moved and opened up fairs in those countries. And there's one happening right now as a matter of fact. Uh, that they have like 200 pieces in their collections that they are really, uh, for that prestige now, they have world famous, their names are world famous because of the fact that they are collecting art. Uh, some people are doing it for legacy, meaning that it is for their family, that they want to leave these artworks to uh, and, and build the collections and grow it. And then I have people who will buy art on when they're in Jamaica or whatever from a little tourist shop and they'll show it to me and like they told me it's going to go up in value and, and I research the artist and that artist doesn't really have a career but it doesn't matter if every time they look at it they're back at the beach and they're back at that, that time and that's that's a that's a perfectly valid reason to have art and of course those works are typically going to be much more affordable um, and then of course as we all do with shoes and everything else. There's the impulse. You just happen to be out with your friend one day walking around and wow, there's something that you just buy it because it just felt good to you. You like it. 